There we go. Hello, everybody. A warm welcome to Women Together. It is uh, wonderful to be together again each week. Uh, my name is Antoinette, and I am the host of our session together. And I'm excited that we have a guest um, with us, Dr. Shauna Shapiro, who I'll introduce in just a few minutes. Um, but so glad to have her back with us um, to share much needed support and um, just connection with ourselves. Um, so I'll just give a little background on Women Together for those of you who have been here a number of times, you've heard this before. For those of you just joining, a warm welcome to you all. Um, I am wearing a fuzzy sweater today. And so I send you warm fuzzy sweater welcome um, vibes. <laughs> and um, that brings just a little um, reminder of where we're coming from. So we started Women Together um, with Eileen Fisher and um, we run the programs out of her foundation. And Eileen is, has been a clothing designer for over 30 years and giving us um, clothing that allows us to feel comfortable and confident in, in our bodies and in ourselves and knowing where our clothes come from. Um, and what she wanted to do was create a series of programs that would allow us to go deeper than the clothing and really allow us to find freedom and comfort and confidence um, inside and really just look at what that actually means to be human on the planet and um, be in connection with each other. So that's where our Women Together programs have really uh, stemmed from. And we were doing in-person programs. And then when the pandemic hit, we really moved to a more virtual experience. We had been doing a hybrid. So we had actually been doing these online connects um, month to month. And then we started doing them every day and we've continued doing them every week. And um, I love going on the gallery view and, um, and just saying hello and seeing all the faces who are here and um, just, just giving a warm welcome to everyone um, because it really is a little bit of a miracle, I think, that it's such a time of isolation that we find a way to connect with each other and to sense into what's going on for ourselves and with each other. Um, so I love the hellos that are already happening in the chat. If you haven't um, done that either in your Zoom uh, function or on YouTube, on YouTube, you can just type in the comments in Zoom. You might have to click on the chat button at the bottom and you'll see um, the greetings coming in from all over. So we have um, Long Beach, California, Reno, Nevada, Winchester, Massachusetts, New York City, Denver, Wisconsin, um, St. Pete, Florida, Owatonna, Minnesota, I believe, Nanuet, New York. <laughs> um, okay, I like that reaction. <laughs> Ossining, um, right down the street, just south of me, yes, Risa. Um, Rockland County, Bethesda, Maryland. Um, Nyack across the, the bridge, um, Pennsylvania, Virginia, Chicago, uh, San Diego, New York City, Costa Rica, um, North Dakota, Falls Church, Virginia, Vermont. I mean, it's just amazing to me. I love reading out all the places that we're coming from um, because, you know, it's really been quite incredible to connect across all of these different um, life experiences and places um, and I know that we've had some people in here from across the world. So really to just be able to connect with each other from our own little homes um, to, you know, all of our different places around the world, across the ocean. Wendy's coming from Switzerland today. Um, so, so good to be all together. Um, Eileen often says that there's a powerful energy that emerges when women connect with other women. And that is what we're doing here today. Um, so rather than kind of go out to a retreat center, we're finding our inner retreat right here um, with some tiny practices. And one of our tiny practices is just doing a moment of stillness together. Um, so before I introduce and turn our session over to Shauna, um, I'll just invite us to land here together. Um, in our bodies and in our place, wherever we are. So I have a little singing bowl. Um, 
that I use. And um, we normally have them in Eileen Fisher conference rooms, but um, we've taken, many of us have taken them home. And um, so I'll ring the bell to bring us, or ring the singing bowl to bring us into a moment of stillness. And I'll ring this to bring it, bring us back. But in order to just land, I wanna just invite you to get your feet on the ground and tune the attention to the feet and see if that's available to you. Getting the feet on the ground doesn't feel right for you, that's okay. But just tune your energy into the feet into a sense of being rooted on the ground. And perhaps as you tune the attention to the feet, maybe also to the seat of where you're sitting and just feeling supported by the ground, feeling supported by the seat that you're on. And as you breathe in, I invite you to breathe in and fill up the back of the body. Often we talk about having a strong back and a soft front. So just tuning in to as you feel the inhale and exhale, maybe finding a little bit more space between the ribs. And just following the inhale and exhale, allowing yourself to ground and land here in this place, wherever you are, and knowing that in this moment, you're connected to all of these amazing people around the world, across the country. And at the same time, you're here with your own breath in your own place, supported by where you are. So as you return to this place and space and moment together, thank you for taking that time. I feel like I just need those moments of stillness before every Zoom meeting <laughs> um, because it would really just, it's every time I do it, I'm just reminded, oh yeah, here I am right here. So thank you for taking that little moment to connect back in um, and yeah, I, I maybe just welcome you back to yourself and welcome you back to this connection with this wonderful group. Um, and without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Shauna. Um, and then we will we'll go into um, this connection with her. And then we will, um, what I call the best part of our program, but today we have really um, two wonderful parts, is being able to connect with each other. So um, while we're going to do some practices together um, after Shauna speaks and invites us into a practice, um, we'll also get the chance to turn and connect with one another. Um, so if you're in on Zoom with us today, you'll be able to turn and talk to each other and connect at a deeper level. And that's really where the magic is. So um, so thank you, Shauna, for being with us. And for those of you who don't know, um, she's a best-selling author. She's a clinical psychologist. 
She's an internationally recognized expert in mindfulness and self-compassion. She's written and published over 150 papers and three critically acclaimed books, which have been translated into 16 languages. Um, and she and I, not so recently, but a few months ago, I think found out that we both had this Bhutan connection. Um, and she presented at the Gross National Happiness uh, summit and in many other countries and companies, her incredible work. Um, and one of the, the pieces that I've loved so much about what she brought to our Women Together community um, in person and online um, is the piece around Good Morning, I Love You. So a wake up and a reminder. And I just remember that when I first heard that, I was like, oh yeah, that's easy. That makes sense. And then I tried to do it and I got up and I went and I looked in the mirror and I was like, good morning. I love you. And I was like, this is so hard, Shauna. So, um, so I really thank you for bringing that practice in and reminding us that, um, that these practices of, of loving ourselves can be really important. Um, and as we do that, perhaps in the chat, we can just type in what brings us here to this conversation around loving ourselves. Um, so yeah, if you'd like to take a moment and type into the chat, just what brought you here to this conversation around loving ourselves and to Shauna, um, that would be wonderful. And that way we can just see what we all came in here really to connect with Bianca's connection and support. And I'll let you all keep doing that as we turn it over to Shauna, over to you. Thank you, Antoinette, I'm delighted to be here. And I'm just gonna take a moment while you are writing your intentions to kind of give you space for that. And I would really invite that as you reflect on why you're here to listen to the body, to feel it. Um, a lot of my research is about multitasking. So I'm just gonna give you a moment just to write in your intention and feel, feel that innocence and that purity of heart that has drawn you here. These are beautiful. Mm, they're inspiring me. Good. So I love, thank you, Antona. I love that we started in stillness and that we then went to intention. And I believe that intention is kind of the foundation of all spiritual practice, really knowing why am I doing what I'm doing. And as she said today, we're going to speak about cultivating self-love and, um, it's interesting because I'm a scientist and I'm also a meditation teacher. And when you talk about self-love in the academic communities, um, there's a lot of kind of rolling their eyes, um, but it's not just there. When you talk about it to people, there's also a lot of rolling your eyes. It's kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I have some things that I need to fix about myself or I have some struggles in my life and like, that's not going to work. And in fact, I was giving a talk yesterday and one really beautiful young woman said, you know, I'm struggling with some serious issues and I'm afraid that if I love myself, I'm just going to like succumb to them. Like I'm never going to turn things around. And so I want to begin with the science because it's for me has been incredibly reassuring and helpful that what the research shows is that practices of self-compassion, which we'll be learning today, practices of self-kindness actually lead to better health outcomes, to greater happiness, to more effective change. A lot of times when I talk to people about self-love or self-compassion, they're like, no, it's going to make me lazy or I'm going to lose my motivation or I'll never change. But what the science actually shows is the exact opposite. And I want to just explain it a little bit. So when we make a mistake or when we do something wrong or when we see a part of ourselves we don't like, what do we typically do? We judge, we shame, right? We, we, we blame ourselves. And there's this kind of mistaken belief that if I somehow beat myself up, then maybe I'll improve. Okay. So what I want you to know is that this shame doesn't work. What happens when we shame ourselves is that we literally shut down the learning centers of the brain. What this means is that all of our resources are shuttled to survival pathways. We go into a fight or flight response and we literally rob ourselves of the 
resources we need to change. Okay, so I want you to understand that when you're judging yourself, when you're shaming yourself, and this happened recently to me, I was with my, my son and I recently moved to Texas to be with my partner and his three kids. And so it's been lots of upheaval and changing and integrating the families. And all of a sudden we have four teenagers and two dogs running around the house and lots of upheaval. And so there was a moment where I snapped at my son and um, and, and I was wrong. Like I, I, I was just too stressed and I, and I was too harsh and I told him to go to his room and I'm sitting there and I start judging myself. You're a terrible mom. You're a fake. You talk about compassion to everyone else. And then you're, you know, so mean in your own home. And, and then I remembered the science. Wait a minute. If I'm shaming myself right now, it's not going to help me be a better mom. It's not going to help me change. It's locking me into this pattern and it's wasting my precious, precious energy that I could be repairing things with my son. And that gave me kind of the motivation to stop the judgment, to take a moment of compassion for myself, to feel that I was suffering in that moment, and then to have the wherewithal to go and and make amends with, with Jackson. So I offer the science right in the beginning to, to kind of help, um, help uh, calm down that part of the mind. That's like, no, I have to judge myself. So many of you may be thinking, well, what's the alternative, right? Um, There are parts of myself I wanna change or that I'm not proud of, or there's mistakes I've made. Um, I don't just wanna kind of passively resign and say, this is who I am. Um, And so the alternative is, is quite simple. It's this attitude of kindness and compassion. What science shows is that when we treat ourselves with kindness and compassion, it actually bathes our system in dopamine. It turns on the learning centers of the brain and it gives us the resources we need to change. So what I want you to know is that, you know, if beating yourself up worked, I would say, go ahead and do it. It just doesn't work. And so the practices I'm gonna be teaching you, they're grounded in science. And if they weren't effective, I wouldn't teach them to you. In fact, there was a recent study done at UC Berkeley with women who were trying to lose weight and half the women were taught kind of traditional weight loss methods and half the women were taught self-compassion. And what they found is that the women in the self-compassion group lost significantly more weight, were eating healthier, were following their doctor's recommendations more than the other group. So self-compassion, instead of turning you into this kind of couch potato that eats Oreos all day long, actually gives you the the power and the choice to make changes. Okay, sound good? Get a few head nods, all right. Um, So the first practice that I wanna take you through is a a, a basic self-compassion practice. And there's three key elements and I'll be walking you through them, but I just wanna talk to you about them first. So the first first element of self-compassion is mindfulness. It's actually just knowing that you're in pain. There's a wonderful study that was done at UCLA called Name It to Tame It. And what they found is when people name their emotions, sad, angry, confused, afraid, it starts to calm down your physiology so that you can think clearly, see clearly and respond wisely. So the first step when we encounter, we've made a mistake or we're suffering or we're in pain is just to name it, just to say, Ooh, ouch, this is hard, I'm in pain. It sounds simple, it's not so easy. The second step is to bring kindness to ourselves. So we notice we're in pain. And just as if I noticed a dear friend of mine was in pain, I would say, oh, sweetheart, ouch, are you okay? So you do the same thing to yourself. Oh, sweetheart, ouch, I'm sending you kindness. I'm, I'm on your team, right? What if we were our own inner ally instead of our inner enemy? So being on your own team and offering that soothing, you see, oh, my my thing's not high enough. So you can see that I put my hand on my heart. Whenever I'm feeling pain, I'll put my hand on my heart. So first of all, there's just, there's something so comforting in this soothing touch, which we so rarely give to ourselves. But second, when we put our hand on our heart, it releases oxytocin. It starts to soothe our nervous system. So the second step is just this kindness, self-kindness. The third step, which 
for me has been revolutionary. And I actually learned it from Dr. Kristen Neff, who's a really dear friend, um, is common humanity. And in this third step, I think about <clears throat> all the other people in the world who might be struggling. So, so for me, all the other people who might be struggling with being a mother or parenting um, or blending families, right? And I just start thinking about all those other parents and children and I just offer them my compassion. You know, may this go smoothly. May you be well. May, you know, know that I'm on your team kind of. And there's this incredible sense of um, empowerment that comes when you're not just um, kind of lost in your own pain, but you recognize you're part of this, this thread of life and that suffering is, is just part of life. You know, we, we experience the full spectrum. We all have our, our sorrows and our disappointments and our, our joys and our dreams. Okay, so these are the three key elements. And I honestly cycle through them many times a day. You can do them in a formal practice, which we'll do right now. But even you can do them in just, you know, 10 second little bites. Fear, sweetheart, it's okay. Think of all the other people who are afraid right now. Send them out my compassion. You can do it very short. So let's take a moment now. And if you'd like, you can close your eyes. If you don't like to close your eyes, that's fine. Just look down at the floor. I like to close my eyes because it helps kind of me focus inward. And then just take a moment to notice how you feel, to bring your mindful awareness to the body. This is where we experience emotion it's in the body. Feel the breath. And just inviting in maybe something difficult that you're facing. Something that you're struggling with. And see if you can just notice how that feels. Create space for whatever emotions arise and see if you can gently name them. Okay overwhelm or stress or confusion or doubt, whatever it is, create space for it with your mindfulness. And then move to the second step of kindness. So take a moment to place your hand on your heart if that feels comfortable. And first just feel that soothing gesture that actual physical act of self-care. And then just offer yourself kindness. What would you say to a dear friend who is struggling with something similar? I'm here, I care about you, I'm on your team. You notice the self-kindness, it's not, it's not pretending that the thing didn't happen or there isn't a challenge. It's just saying, I'm in this with you. We've got this. I'm going to walk with you through this struggle. Feel your breath and just notice what's happening. Create space to invite in. I welcome my emotions with kindness. I'm on my own team. And now I want you to reflect on the fact that you're not alone in this challenge that there are probably many, many people in this world right now who are facing something similar, something in the same genre of emotion. And so just begin to send the same care and compassion, the same camaraderie to all these people in this world who you may not know, but may be facing something similar.
I wish you well. May your suffering pass. I care about your suffering. And as you're ready, just noticing how that felt and coming back to your center. Feel the breath in the body. Feel the hand on your heart. And I was really touched as we entered to seeing all the comments and people saying how grateful they were for this community. And so I want you to take a moment here at the end of the meditation. And I want you to think about each person on this Zoom call. We have well over 100 people all here together. And each person just like you is facing some challenges right now. And so I want you just to offer out your kindness, your compassion to each person here on this call together. Many of you know each other and many of you don't, it doesn't matter. I'm on your team, I wish you well. I hope that your struggles pass. I care about your suffering. And so with each exhale, I want you to send this kindness out. And with each inhale, I want you to receive it from everyone else on this call. As you inhale, breathing it in. As you exhale, breathing it out. I want you to know that I've peeked open my eyes and looked at the gallery view so I can take in everyone. So if you think that no one's sending you love and kindness right now, I am. So as you inhale, breathing in this compassion from everyone else. And as you exhale, just releasing and offering it back out. Taking another breath in and out. And then just taking a moment to put your hand back in your lap and let the nutrients of this practice sink in. So just like after we've eaten a big meal, we wanna take a moment to digest. After we do a practice, we wanna take a moment to really invite in the benefit the nourishment. This is good for you. So receive the goodness. And taking a moment to really thank yourself for engaging, for your presence and your courage. And I want to invite you to reflect on one thing from this practice that you want to remember, that you want to take with you. And just hold that word or that phrase or even just that experience in the body. Hold it in your mind for 20 seconds, about two deep breaths. That's how long it takes to encode a learning into your long-term memory. And so then take another breath in and out and slowly let some light come back in through the eyes. Go ahead and stretch your arms above your head. I don't have any scientific data for that, but it feels good always. Okay, good. So Antoinette, I wanted to ask, am I allowed to hear from the participants with what they noticed? Yeah, absolutely. Um, just a note that we are, um, currently on both YouTube and Zoom. So um, just a reminder that you would be broadcasted out and um, yeah, but that's all good. As long as people are willing, absolutely feel free to share. So I'm curious what people noticed. And uh, I see a question, how long does it take to encode information into your long-term memory? So it takes about 20 to 30 seconds. Um, it's really interesting, actually, you know, we think that just having an experience leads to learning, 
it doesn't. You have to stay with that experience. And so that's why I want to take some time right now and just hear about what you noticed, what questions you you have, and maybe what I call them your gold nuggets, these kind of key takeaways. So I'm seeing some lovely comments down here, but wondering if anyone has anything they want to share. And if you do want to share it, you can click on the participants button at the bottom of the screen if you're on a computer and you can um, click the little blue hand and raise it. So we have Bianca, go ahead. Wow, I mean, just thank you for leading us through that. It's just so fascinating to me that I came into the room, into this space with one energy, you know, smiling, didn't think anything was wrong. Mm -hmm. And then you take us into this stillness. And the key word for me was deep, is the word deep. Because I know me and I choose to go deep. It's not a conscious thing. I just do. And you were able to hold my hand through that. Mm -hmm. So I thank you. And what came up was, you know, a lot of tears. Um, I'm not going to get into my brain in terms of naming what that is, mm -hmm. but it was um, a release mm -hmm. and I'm grateful for that. And maybe it's just love. Maybe it's just letting the love in through this connection. And when the hand on the heart, so powerful, it's just so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I imagined this whole community in this big virtual hug of just hugging one another. And I allowed myself to feel it. So thank you so much. Beautiful, Bianca. And you said a couple of really important things. And I think, especially right now, um, we're under a tremendous cognitive and emotional load, just given this past year. And it's really important to take time to kind of empty it out, right? Bianca, you said you felt the, the tears coming up. And even though you had started off with a smile, it's that we're all carrying this. And for me, it's been incredibly helpful and supportive to every single day take time to kind of, it, I think of it as like, you know, you empty out your water glass a little so you can fill it back up because every day there seems to be something new that fills it up. And so these practices kind of purify our heart, purify our emotions, and give us the resilience and the resources to meet whatever's next. Yeah, beautiful. I love the big virtual hug idea. It's great. So I believe Betsy had actually raised her hand next. Um, so we'll add you in here, Betsy, and if you can unmute yourself. Thank you, Antoinette. Um, I just love this because um, as you were suggesting uh, sharing love uh, with other people when we, when we were breathing in and breathing out, I just got this big smile on my face as I breathed in and, and breathing out the same thing. Mm -hmm. And it just felt like a wonderful practice. And I too, like what Bianca was sharing about the tears in the beginning, when I was concentrating on myself and I didn't even know I felt anything earlier but you know it's there and it was just beautiful um when I was giving myself some love so you know and others mm -hmm. you know I love the and others part so yeah. thank you so much for sharing thank I, you you're so welcome and again that's so beautiful is this this realization that there is this tenderness and this pain that needs to be witnessed and held. And I think what you said, Betsy, that's so important is when we start sending this compassion to ourselves and to others, there's this like this smile and this love that starts to happen. And this is really important because so many of us, I think are afraid to touch these painful emotions because we feel like we're just gonna get sucked down into them. It's like spirals. 
And what the research shows, this is uh, research done at the University of Switzerland about two years ago, it's pretty new research, is that when we empathize with our own pain or someone else's pain, so let's say you see someone stub their toe and you're like, oh, ow, that hurts, right? The pain centers of your brain light up. When you offer compassion, this love, the pleasure reward healing centers of the brain light up. So we have to be really mindful about how we pay attention to pain. If you pay attention to pain by just feeling it without the love, it lights up the pain centers and you get burnt out. Anyone feeling a little burnt out? <laughs> so what we need to do is when we or the people we love are in pain, we feel it, we name it, but then we move immediately into the love. Right. So when I'll go back to my son, because he's the easiest one, but he was some, some kids were bullying him also because he's in a new school now. And like the pain I felt when I, when I imagined his pain was almost unbearable. But then I did this practice where I then felt, why am I in pain? Oh, cause I love him and I'm on his team and I wish him well. And all of a sudden I was buoyed by the love. So it's a really important distinction. And as a professor, I train therapists, uh, my graduate students, and I teach them compassion is your protection suit. Then you can go into all of the suffering that exists with love and it protects you, literally physiologically. So wonderful, wonderful question. I know Antoinette, we wanna give people a little bit of time to break out and talk with each other. I'm not sure what, how much time I have. Maybe we could take one more comment question and then um, give us, at least a short amount of time in breakouts. Right. So, um, cause I think, yeah. Um, ah, there are three though, four. <laughs> um, Lynn, why don't you come in next? You're muted, Lynn. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to say that for me, there are so many shoulds in my head about, oh, I should be able to handle this. I should, I should be able to deal with this. I, I should, this shouldn't pull me down so much. That sometimes it's really hard where you started about telling the truth to ourselves about how we feel. And I, for me, overcoming, you know, overcoming sort of admitting that there are there are things I can't do alone and things that deeply you know deeply sort of cause distress and and that I'm not so powerful <laughs> and need the help of others mm -hmm. uh, I, I found that to be very very powerful to be mm -hmm. able to connect and able to be honest with yourself about what you need and for me, the rest then comes sort of more, comes pretty easily. It was that initial piece of being honest and truthful with myself that, that was really a challenge. Yeah, such, thank you, Lynn, such a good point. It's that vulnerability, that willingness to look at the, the darker or more painful parts of ourselves. That's what, that's what takes the courage and the strength. And if you know you're going to meet it with, kindness, it gives us a little bit more of a, you know, as I, I loved, I think it was Betsy or one, one of the other speakers said that they felt like I was holding their hand, Bianca, um, through it. And in some ways you want to be able to hold your own hand. You want to be able to say, sweetheart, I, we're, we're in this together. We can go and look at this, this scary thing or this overwhelming thing, because I've got you. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to be able to do for ourselves. So wonderful. You did a great job, Lynn. Oh, I just want to hear from everyone and I also want everyone to be heard. So I think what we'll do is um, we'll move into 10 minutes of breakouts and then we'll come back for a final 10 minutes with Shauna so that um, we can each be heard and we can each share and we can come back to our main space together. Um, so just thank you to the those of you on YouTube um, for being with us. We'll stay in touch with our conversation space. So um, womentogether.com slash conversations, and we can stay in touch with each other. And um, we'll share um, some of Shauna's resources there as well. So 
Um, for those of you who are not going to join us for breakouts, thank you for being with us. And for those of you who are joining into breakouts and connecting with each other, um, this is a time for you to share what's coming up for you um, with this practice and, and really um, listen to each other, giving each other the gift of listening um, deeply and being with, um, being with one another in this moment um, that as we carry all of this and also give ourselves this little gift of loving ourselves. So um, enjoy your time together. We'll be back in 10 minutes um, to reconnect with Shauna. <laughs> 